Our topic is about Victorian architecture. Uh, our, these are our questions that will be the basis of our presentation today. When, when was Victorian architecture at its best? How did this style of architecture influence its time period? Where and when did Victorian architecture originate? How has Victorian architecture influenced architecture today? And how has Victorian architecture evolved? This is the architecture's prime. Victorian architecture was best in 1860 and through the 1900s. It was the first architecture to put steel and steel working into the design. It was the design of many famous buildings such as the Midland Hotel, the St. Pancras Railway Station, and many more. Also included in the famous buildings is Big Ben in London, which is also one of the basis of the design of architecture. It includes clockworks on a middle, uh, central tower that shows time in all directions to make sure everybody can see it. And also the steel working that was put in design to des into design was uh, arches or beams across the ceiling creating domes, but they were found inside the actual structure of the building so they were not visible creating the, uh, making the building more, si uh, making it look nicer on the inside. Influence its time. Because of its popularity, Victorian architecture influenced and represented the power uh, Queen Victoria possessed during her re reign. It's still found in architecture today, making it one of the most popular styles ever created. Also included with uh, Queen Victoria, it started near the end of her reign when she was dying, and it was made as a memorial, and it caught on quickly among architectures, making it one of the most popular. And so. They built it around all the city that, all of London, so it could uh, prove that her power was great and showed how she influenced all in the time period. Victorian architecture originated in the 19th century in Great Britain. It was named after Queen Victoria. This style of architecture originated near the beginning of Queen Victoria's reign, but it wasn't popular until near the end of her reign. But it has remained a popular style of, building among, of buildings among architects. When architects make Victorian architecture, they oftentimes have either paintings or some type of artwork inside of the building to represent Queen Victoria's power, even though she's long dead and gone. Because of its design and structure, Victorian architecture continues to be used in countries such as the USA, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, London, and many more. There are over 100,000 Victorian buildings. One of the big cities that Victorian architecture is found, a lot, found in a lot is San Francisco. A lot, around the city, a lot of the times, there are just Victorian houses spread around, even for just uh, houses for people who aren't even popular. But in many big areas, like in big and popular areas, they also include bigger uh, hotel-like structures that are based on Victorian architecture. The Victorian architecture has evolved a lot since its prime. Victorian houses have gotten much bigger and cost more. Victorian architecture incorporated steel in the late, the late 1800s. They started, to build buildings, they started to build buildings instead of houses such as hotels and factories, even factories that they just work in and make steel, like such as the steel they use in the framework of the design they make inside buildings based off Victorian architecture. And when it, with the costing more, Victorian architecture came, became more popular. It became more popular as time uh, progressed, because the original structure that architects originated was very sturdy. But over time, it's evolved, and people have improved it and made the steel work make uh, support the structure even more. These are a few examples of the Victorian houses. And this is a blueprint of the uh, two-story Victorian houses. You can see here there's the stairway and then all this. Victorian architecture often in times inside. The second floor is almost all balconies, just looking over into great and big rooms, such as ballrooms. And here is a sketch of uh, artist. It's an artist's sketch of a design that they wanted to use as a blueprint for a house. And this is the model which this is based off of. If you can see that there's a central piece that is circular right here, I have it built in. 
and then the side piece with another mini circular dome and another house with the balcony, I mean, with the pagoda circling around the house and with a yeah. slanted, slanted roof with a balcony off, coming off the side. It inc the circular dome is very popular in Victorian architecture because when the architect started building it, Queen Victoria was still alive and so she emphasized what she wanted the, her, all the buildings to look like and that was one of her main points, including also these arches, the big arches they have here with the uh, circular domes placed around the building. Um, the steel work in this would be the beams coming up from here and for the circular part, there are beams inside on the top that are yeah. not visible because uh, they put flat ceiling above it so the beams aren't seen so it makes it more <laughs> pleasing to the eye. And the beam works in the, uh, in the spiral like house are found inside the walls in cross wires, which I have examples of. They're crossed like this. And so it helps support the beam in hard weather such as like wind and tornadoes. Hard wind and tornadoes. And this is our sources. These are our sources. That's it. Do y'all have any questions there? Oh, questions. If, um, have you seen uh, any of the homes or buildings in our area, not just Wada, but Longview, et cetera, around that are good examples of Victoria? I haven't gotten to see very many because I haven't lived here for very long. I just moved here last year, and okay. so I haven't okay. seen any. Have you seen any? Mm -mm. Yeah, there are, I'll give you a couple. There's, oh, they're over on Gilmer Road um, on, uh, by Chick after Chick-fil-A. There's a, a, sub, a subdivision there that they've got a couple of different with uh, um, extensions and the round, you know, the, the, the round design, et cetera, with the pediments and the, the pretty um, lace trim work. So there are a couple. You don't see them very often, but also, something I didn't mention in the style of Victorian architecture is the windows. Our windows today are normally square or rectangle. Well, Victorian architecture, they had, ra uh, they had square at the bottom, but then it came off at a round in an arch. And so that w those are found all around Victorian architecture. And they used it, they, fo they found that uh, property of it uh, after Gregorian architecture what was the popular style of architecture before it and they used that and incorporated it into the Victorian architecture. Any more questions? So why did you choose this topic of all when you had an option to talk? Because Vic, uh, me and Stone, uh, well, I'm not sure about Stone, but I have always wanted to be in architecture, and I've always mm -hmm. been into building Legos and everything, and I mm -hmm. want to become an architect when I grow up. So what is the importance of studying the different types of architecture? So when you have to go to design a house, and if it's like somebody telling you what they want their house to look like, you can be, know what type of architecture they are basically describing and know how to make that work and make it sturdy. I'm thinking about the architects that I like. Uh, I like the, the works of uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, where you can with him. He's done a lot of stuff in Texas. And, uh, I can't think of any of it in steel. I, just, I never thought of it, something I learned here was the steel incorporation. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the beams and the steel had holes all like all the way through it. They had holes spaced out not very far apart and they had drills that would drill into the walls but then they'd have a plaster over it to make it sight worthy and but it made it even more sturdy. But that is that's one of the evolution. They just barely started using that in the design. So in Victorian architecture, what's the one thing you think is the ugliest part of it? I don't think there is an ugly part of it. So what's your favorite part of it then? I like how they have domes. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then get right, uh, gathering from what you've gathered that she was pretty elaborate, Queen Victoria, her style, her mm -hmm. dress or whatever, and that's how a lot of that came out of that. Yeah, her crown even had a yeah. symbol of uh, Victorian architecture yeah. in it, which included the arches. And it was a small diamond crown that had arches. Honey, David Malton, I don't have a design here because it's just toothpicks and marshmallows, Malton, but the it's the round please, windows, please. and that was in her crown. Very good. You took that one over. <laughs>